Greetings. I'd like to make this quick video concerning how our exclusivity or fidelity in relationships is contingent upon our hormones or chemical releases. More importantly, how this differs between men and women. I was inspired by a post I saw earlier on Instagram that said, my life changed forever when my therapist told me how to get my body to release quote unquote happy chemicals. These include dopamine, which is released when one completes a task, eats good food, or gets enough sleep. Oxytocin is released when one plays with the animals, gives a compliment, or holds hands. Serotonin is released when you are in nature, meditating, getting sun, or practicing mindfulness. And endorphins are released when you watch a funny movie, exercising, and of course, through vigorous sexual activity. These are just a few of the examples that were given in the post. However, as I looked them over, I thought about the differences between these hormones and how they are released and the correspondences between masculine and feminine, the nature of masculine and feminine, and how the nature of masculinity and femininity shapes our roles and responses in our relationships. So generally, masculinity generally masculinity is action based action driven and motivated by the incentivization of reward men are built to pursue in other words men are the consummate and proverbial hunters they work hard and vigorously, competitively, to receive the reward. Dopamine is a reward-based chemical. It is released when one has accomplished something, hence completing a task. For a man, this may be indeed the pursuit of a woman. So one spends his time pursuing a woman laboriously, enthusiastically he hunts the woman studies the woman and the acquisition of that woman allows him to receive the reward and the feelings associated with that reward that are triggered by the chemical release when you also think of eating good food you think of being nourished However, you you also think of the man's reward for hunting and killing his prey is that meal. Going out to work hard every day to literally put food on the table. That is the reward. So the relationship between something one is doing Hence, the action-based and action-driven wiring of masculinity yields the reward of consumption, acquisition, and even rest thereafter. We can even speak more spiritually about how the Creator in a masculine embodiment creates the, the universe and then rests and what this means for us as humans following suit and observing the Shabbat but that's another story for another day so dopamine is released in men along with vasopressin vasopressin is a hormone that induces territorialism and defensive aggression. 
So clearly, when we put two and two together, we see that the man who has worked hard to pursue and prove, i.e. prove himself, through various actions to acquire the woman, then after sexual intercourse, releases vasopressin, which in suitable quantities then activates his desire to protect that woman and claim that woman and that territorialism activated is that which incentivizes his commitment to exclusivity with that woman for women it is different because for the woman oxytocin is released this is not released for the men. Oxytocin, also known as the bonding hormone, the love chemical, is released. It is most well known to be released when a woman has a child through nursing or breastfeeding. While we know that oxytocin is released when women are breastfeeding, we must also remember oxytocin is released with physical contact, specifically skin-to-skin -skin contact, which is vitally crucial for newborn development and the neurological as well as psychological and emotional stability and well-being of the child. However, oxytocin allows the woman to bond with the man similarly through skin-to-skin -skin contact or intercourse. Oxytocin is an interesting hormone that assists greatly in childbirth and labor. What many may not be aware of is the same way women are often stimulated during sexual intercourse is the same way that childbirth and easier less painful labor and delivery is facilitated. For example, nipple stimulation. While quite enjoyable for many women during sexual intercourse, it is also highly functional in ripening the cervix and causing uterine contractions to facilitate quicker, easier, and less painful labor. Also, it plays a crucial role in fertility because the same mechanism, the same process by which oxytocin is released to soften the cervix and open the cervix and contract the uterus during labor and delivery, how do you think the baby got there in the first place? Through the very complex, the beautifully complex system of arousal response in women, you have clitoral stimulation or the clitoral orgasm that makes way for the vaginal canal being lengthened as the cervix actually rises and gradually expands through a series of multi-orgasmic steps. In other words, the clitoral orgasm is only, should be only the first orgasm in a round of healthy sexual intercourse, especially that which is geared towards fertility and optimal conception. The G-spot orgasm serves another function, the A-spot orgasm, the O-spot, the U-spot orgasm. These are all various checkpoints, so to speak, in the process of reaching the woman's full arousal. Yes, women are multi-orgasmic, and many women are not fully aroused until after reaching several smaller orgasms, should I say. But that is a whole nother intricate process that I explain in full in my masterclass, Overcome Demystifying Clitoral Orgasm and different levels of orgasm. For now, we will return back to the idea that oxytocin released during things like nipple stimulation, 
contact and skin-to-skin -skin contact during sexual intercourse is the mechanism by which women bond to men during sexual intercourse. And yes, women as well release dopamine, which creates this sense of reward. Uh, the reward of having gained the man's approval, his attraction, and his interest. Now what the man has gained which releases his dopamine response is the acquisition of the woman's consent, the woman's permission, the woman's access, the woman giving her access to her body. This does not necessarily mean that the man is ready to commit. That is where the vasopressin comes in. It creates that territorial instinct and that aggression that causes him to protect the woman from outsiders and thus make the woman truly his. I would love to go much more in depth into this in another video and I hope that you join me soon on this channel. Keep your notifications on and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.